some music. Oh, I forgot to hit play. Hitting play would, uh, would help. Hitting play would help. It would help, right? Um, thank you very much, Sleeping Luna. Sleep, sleeping Lunads. I appreciate that. That is, uh, the intro video is my, uh, my clip of bloopers. I try to change it up every couple of months. Try to do that. Uh, Nikki, yes, yes, exactly, right? All right, here, let me start at the top. First off, Marin, Dreaming and Ada, Infantry, thank you so much for those hosts. I appreciate it. Hey, Looney. And I said hi to Nikki. Hey, Boot Black. And I said hi to Sleepin'. Oh, Red Fox, yes, yes, okay. I was like, I don't know the name Sleeping Luna. Yeah, but I know Red Fox, thank you. Uh, Boot Black, today is a, um, uh, Today's a special stream. We are doing our quilt along stream on Monday. So unfortunately, the um, the alerts don't go off. But I appreciate those bits. Thank you very much. Um, quickly before we get into today's block, we've got you see right here on the upper left hand corner giveaways on eight eights. So what that means is all the giveaways that we accrue through today are going to be added to the list, and we are going to uh, do those giveaways on August the eighth. So August the 8th is a special day. It is the first stream back that is not going to be a quilt along stream. Um, nice. Uh, it's going really well. Thank you very much, sleeping. So hey, Azuls, how are you? Um, so the so our giveaways from today's stream and next Tuesdays, if you are sewing along with us live here on Twitch, please mark your calendars next week. It is not Monday. It is Tuesday because I leave tomorrow morning for Gen Con. I'm doing my running around last minute packing, pulling my hair out, trying to get everything done stuff for Gen Con. So that means I'm driving back from Gen Con on Monday. So next Tuesday, I will be streaming live from Maryland from Tomorrow's Treasures Quilt Shop. If you're in the Maryland area and you are doing the quilt along, please feel free to, uh, to sign up for their class at Tomorrow's Treasures. It is free. Uh, and then you can go ahead and sew with me live. So we'll have some fun. Hey, Amber, how are you? Yes, Gen Con is interrupting our regular, but and we'll go back to our regular schedule in about a month and a half because I'm going to be in Maryland for a few weeks. <coughs> Thank you so much for picking up that pattern. Uh, I will be in Maryland in a few weeks uh, for, for a few weeks. And then we have Dragon Con. Very excited. Uh, so this is the last stream in my home studio until September. So all the month of August, we'll be streaming live from Tomorrow's Treasures. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be absolutely a lot of fun. Uh, okay, so we've got our giveaways next Thursday night. Giveaways for this stream and next Tuesday stream. We're going to be doing next Thursday evening. And it's also an unboxing. If you would like to see some of the goodies, and there are some amazing goodies that have been sent to me. These are not only things that I have ordered, but things that, that um, companies send me to try out. Like new cool things. Um, I'm gonna, everything is sitting in my Maryland address and I'm gonna be opening everything on stream next Thursday. Very excited for it. I'm super excited for it. Hey kitties, how are you? Hey Kraken Bean. So yeah, yeah. All right, any questions on the quilt along um, before we get started with today? So today is Mega Android. We are block number seven. We are past the halfway point, guys. Past the halfway point. So before I get going, any questions at all on the quilt along? Uh, no, not on the opening screen. I never have it on the opening screen because this is the, the early chatting, everything else. I, the pictures are on the other ones probably just never noticed before. See? It's 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 on the uh, on the other ones. Oh wait, hold on. I need to let me bring up my Stream Deck mobile app so I can do that on the go and I don't have to keep on reaching over and do that. And you're three blocks. You know what? Only 3 blocks behind is not a bad problem. Is not a bad problem at all. All right. Mwah. You're a good boy, aren't you? You're such a good boy. You are my Mr. Marley boy. All right, so you ready to do this? Let's do this. All right, first off, remember, we want to make sure that we pull the correct fabrics before we do anything at all. 
And I realize I have to keep looking that way for the chat because I left my iPad upstairs. But that's okay. We'll work with what we've got. I may grab it during our break at 3 o'clock. Uh, if you are joining me live, about right around the 3 o'clock time area, we're going to take a quick break. Um, about a 10-minute break so we can let the dogs out, grab a snack, Thank do you other for things. subscribing to Quill Thank you Tony. so much for that grab sub. Thank you, and head Jose. Down to the sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Woot, why not come in a flare awesomeness? Hello, YouTube. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for that 12-month resub. I super appreciate that. Oh, is that is it glitching? Oh, it is glitching. Thank you very much for letting me know. All right, so let's deactivate that and activate it. And we'll see if that helps. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder why that's glitching. Okay, let me unplug and replug it back in because we can't have a glitchy camera. There we go. Technical issues, right? Always, if you have an issue, turn it off and on again. And then unplug it and plug it back in. There you go. See? Computers! Turn it off and on again and it works. Oh, wait. No, just that one issue. Okay, we should be fine. Hey, Jen Bear, how are you? Thank you for letting me know about that, kitties. All right, where was I? Where was I? Other than, oh, Jose, thank you for that 12 months. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, so, block seven. Remember, the first thing we want to do is pull our fabrics. We've got black. Okay, let's see. Here is black. There's no other blacks in there, right? Nope. Bright blue. Okay, now I gotta remember which one's bright blue. Oh, we're using both of them, bright blue and blue. Fantastic. I'm just gonna pull them both then. Okay, so there's bright blue and blue. Okay, and then we need tan. So the tan, my tan looks like that. It should be this one right here, yes. And then we need gray. Is gray back up? Oh, gray is in here. There we are, and here's my gray. Perfect. All right, we don't need the rest of this. I don't need this. So I'm gonna take these and set these aside. Oh, after I knock everything off. Because it, it wouldn't be me if I didn't knock things off, right? Right? All right, next. Oh, look at all of these pieces that we are pulling from other blocks. So if you're making this as part as the Retro Gaming Revival quilt, a quarter of each fabric, a quarter yard of each fabric is needed. If it's being made as part of it, oh, it's, if it's not a part of it, a quarter of each fabric, if it is part of it, pull the following things. So we need puzzle tetrads, which I put on bottom. So that is what we did last week. Oh, there's some fabrics too. Okay, so puzzle tetrads. So remember, you pull your previous blocks and you pull the things. All right, so we need a bright, so the two and a half inch bright blue. Okay, two and a half inch bright blue. And I don't have any other bright blue pieces. No, okay. A gray two and a half inch. There we go. Both two and a half inch blue from here and from the um, the dark mage. Okay, so let's pull the blue off right here. So it looks like we'll need both of those. And then it says, do not cut one. So even though I'm pulling two strips, we're only not cutting one. Okay, and then do I need anything else in the puzzle tread treads? Yes, half inch, one and a half inch blue strips. So the blue, not bright blue, right? Yes. So I'm pulling this right here. So the half inch blue strip. Okay, and that's everything for the puzzle tetrads. So let's 
put everything back. There you go. And there's that. Now, I don't need the dog, so I need Dark Mage and coins. Okay? So here's my coins and my Dark Mage. All right, so from Dark Mage, we need the blue strip. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how much math went into figuring this out. How much math actually went into the uh, figuring out which strips you need from each block and pulling and oh, so much math. So much math. Because that's what quilt pattern design is. It's just a bunch of math. If anyone is interested in um, designing quilts like this. If you want access to my spreadsheet of how I figured it all out, I'll give, I'm not gonna teach you how I did it because it's, it's a lot of hard work, but I'll give you access to my spreadsheet if you want. So you can see all the work that went into it. Or if you're just curious. All right, we've got, oh, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. So Nikki linked the book in chat. So I do have a book on how to design and create your own uh, patterns. And I've done all the math for you. Okay, so we've got... All right! <gasps> oh, I think those are Legolish's uh, alerts. They're coming through, even though I've turned them off. Yeah, I think it's Legolish's alert. That's funny. So, uh, for those of you on YouTube... Um, you may get these alerts for the next couple of, um, of weeks. I know, right? There's nothing I can do without actually deleting it and putting it back in. So it's fine. Um, so what I am going to... Oh, fantastic. Um, so you may see here those alerts. Nothing's going to pop up on the screen. Basically, I am, uh, helping out a friend of mine with their vet bills. Um, so I am encouraging donations to Legolish here on Twitch. Uh, and so I have his alerts popped into here, so... You know what I should do? I should, I, yeah, let's delete it. Let's delete it and then I can always put it back. That's fine. So Lego alerts, remove. Yes. That's fine. I'll remove it for now. Uh, Nikki, will you do me a favor and remind me to remove it from the other screens and then I will add it back in next Thursday? Okay, so coins. Half inch, one and a half, so remaining half inch black strip. Okay, so I've got that. Perfect. And now I'm done with my blocks. There we go. Perfect. Oh, I put this fabric there and it doesn't go there. It goes with the rest of the fabric. That would help. That would help, right? That would help. Okay, so we've got block seven mega android. So let's start cutting. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is I, because I pulled previous things from previous blocks, at this point, because there's so many that we're pulling from here on end from previous blocks, I actually mark my pattern so that I know what I'm actually cutting. So a bright blue, two and a half inch, two and a half inch bright blue. I don't need to cut that. Uh, a gray, two and a half, okay. It says, I pulled one, so it has three right here, so I'm gonna cross this off and put a two. Both blue two and a half inch strips. That's a one, so I'm gonna change that to zero. All right, and a half inch, the one and a half inch blue. So one and a half inch blue, I have three. I'm gonna change that to two. And then the black. Black, I have one. I'm gonna change that to zero. So you know what this means. Hey, Lego, how are you? Uh, so you know what this means with the black, we now have a zero, zero. So I no longer have to cut black. I can take my black and set it aside because I've used it from previous ones. All right, we've got bright blue. So let me cut my bright blues. I only need two one and a half inch strips and I've got that one from before. Let 
There we go. Oh, perfect. That is a perfect one and a half. That was a, that's what I was hoping for. Nope. I have to delete it from all that the ones. Bet bill or travel money, I don't care. Yep. A small prize to make people smile. All right. Let me delete it from all of them. Yes. Sorry. For some reason, I thought if I... I know, right? For some reason, I thought if I just turned it off and deleted it from that screen, it would do that. And I don't think I put it on this one. So I still have his link so I can add it on later. That's not a problem. Okay. I think I've got everything. Yes, I didn't add it to anything else. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I think we're good. I think we're good now. Okay. All right. So let me cut this. Okay. There's one. And then now I get to use my new fabric. Now I get to use my new fabric. Oops. I got to iron that. We always want to iron new fabric. I forgot to get water before stream. I forgot to get water. Yeah, Lego, if you're still hearing, if you're still listening into the stream, I went ahead and deleted the alerts, so hopefully they don't, they don't pop through for this stream, but I will add them next Thursday again. All right, so that's okay. I should be okay through the break so I could get um, some more water at the break. Waiting for my iron to heat up. I know, baby. Such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. You're a very good boy. Oh. Come on. It's funny. I say it every time. My Aliso is such a great iron. And it heats up so fast that I get impatient that it's not instant. I think I fixed it though. I think I fixed it to where the alerts aren't going to pop through on the stream anymore. Come on. Come on. There we go. Remember, we are doing a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step for this block. So if you have any questions at all, let me know. Are you doing this block with us today? There we go. Whoops. I've got to make sure that I cut off everything at the end. Oh, I don't know why I do that. I have my phone right there. You know how where you're so used to doing the, the hard thing over and over and over to whenever you actually go to do the easy thing, it's it throws you off. So you just want to keep on doing that hard thing. All right. This is our scrap. Uh, not today, please, Lego. There we are. We've got that. All right, we've got that. Remember, I do have classes around the world watching me right now while we're doing this quilt along. All right, we've got next is blue. Okay, so I need two one and a half inch strips. Now is this, nope, that can't do a two and a half, so I'm gonna go ahead and do one and a half here. Oh, I don't need my pen anymore. Perfect. All right, 
So four, 15 and a half, so that's one. And I need two, because we already have one cut. Oh, that's right, I only asked for another quarter yard, so that's it. So let's iron this. Fantastic question. This is the Stripology ruler. So it actually has doo -doo 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 slots in it. So it is, it's great for super fast stripping. So whenever you have to cut strips at a super fast speed, it's an amazing ruler. And the link that um, Nikki put in there is the is where you can find it. There are two different sizes. You have this size, which is which is 20 inches wide, but, or you also have the um, the squared. So the Stripology squared ruler, so you can use it as a square up, as well as a strip. And then that one is actually a little bit taller, and but it's shorter. I think it's a 14 by 14 or 14 and a half by 14 and a half. I accidentally left it in Maryland. That's what I normally use now for um, for these kinds of strips. There we are, so it's a one and a half. Oh, we've got this. There, okay, so I've got all of my blue. Now tan. Tan, I don't have anything previously, so I need one, two and a half, and two, one and a half. You know, I think this is a brand new piece of fabric, so I think I should iron it. So it looks like I've got some uh, some creases in there. Yeah, whenever they released them, two years ago, I think? It was a year and a half or two years ago, whenever Gundra, who is the designer that created it, released it, I was ecstatic. I was so happy because I had been looking for a good strip ruler. You will also find these. Um, you can also find the, um, the June Taylor strip rulers in your local big box stores. The problem with the June Taylors is it's so flimsy, as you see, it breaks really easily. So it's a much thinner piece of plastic. The stripologies, and again, they don't sponsor me. I purchased this. They did not give this to me for free. Um, the Stripologies actually the, have a coating on the back that helps it not to move. The June Taylors slide. So it's really hard to keep it in place. This grabs the fabric and it keeps it in place. But if you can't afford a Stripology, a June Taylor is a good alternative. There we are. Okay, let's cut that off and tan. So I said I need one, two and a half, and two one and a half. One. Congratulations, you have just followed Quiltoni. Two. Your taste must Mr. be Mr. Starner, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it. And for anyone new to the stream, if you have not been here yet before for the quilt along, this is a teaching stream. We're going to be doing this block complete, start to finish. And then I will be uploading it to YouTube tomorrow. So if you miss anything or have to go back, you can rewatch it here on Twitch. Or of course, you can just pop onto YouTube tomorrow. If you are watching me in a class right now, same thing. You can uh, pop into Twitch if you have any questions, concerns, pop into the chat and ask. Or if you want to just watch YouTube tomorrow, you can. If you, for some reason, if you fall behind, if you don't have a stripology ruler and cutting those strips take you forever. All right, two, two and a half, two, one and a half. There we are. Okay, so the next two and a half would be a five, but that is 
not good because right here is where my thread, or my thread, my fabric cuts off for the edging. So we've got, let's see, a two and a half, so let me go four. There we are. Perfect, perfect. All right, so it's a one and a one, so I still need one and one. So I still need one and one. So here's our new fabric. Let's iron it. Now we talk all the time about, should you wash your fabrics? What is everyone, everyone that's watching that is in chat right now, what do you do? Do you wash your fabrics? I still need one and one. So Mistress wash it, washes fabrics. Nikki says no unless it's a knit. Because I know Nikki does a lot of sewing that's not necessarily quilting. Is everyone else too busy making their blocks? All right, two and a half. So basically, you used to have to wash all of your fabrics. Yes. Oh, oh, because you've never, oh, but you make a lot of clothing. Yes, in that case, yes, you pre-wash your fabrics. For quilts, with quilting cotton, if you get a 100% cotton for quilts, okay, you used to have to pre-wash all your fabrics. Because, remember, fabrics didn't go through the same process as what you do now. If it's a petite or really deep red, yes, Azul, that's a, that is a great point for quilting. So, with your fabrics, if you, with cotton, so let's say these right here. These are Camelot fabrics, um, and I'm actually going to go to the next step and start cutting from, oh, you know what? I'll talk about the washing fabrics in a sec. Let me cut these in half first. All right, so, from the one and a half inch strips, okay? Cut in half, two tan, Okay, so here, I'm cutting it in half right here. So I have two pieces. So I have, so two tans, one blue. Now remember, I already have a blue that's cut in half. So I don't have to cut another blue in half. A bright blue. A gray and a black. Now remember, I still have this block, so I do not have to cut anything in half, and I don't even have a block to cut in half. All right, let's set those aside. And then now I'm gonna start cutting the fabric. So I have, tan is going to be first. Now remember, whenever I cut them, I cut them in groups of two. So I cut them in groups of two. That way it's more efficient and better. It's more better. So whenever I do that, um, oh, let me, sorry, my husband's texting me. Uh, so I wanna do cut it in groups of two, okay? So then that way I can figure that out. Um, so for the gray, I need one, one and a half. I'm actually gonna cut two Thank and set one aside. Thank you for subscribing to Quiltoni. Miss Biscuit. Grab your needles Thank you and head much. down to the sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Been a bit since I dropped by, but yay, 14 months. Thank you so much, Tea Biscuit. I super appreciate you. Thank you very much for that sub. I super, super appreciate you. So, 14 months. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, oh no, and I completely understand that, mistress. All right, so I'm gonna be cutting these pieces out of here. Uh, let me go back to the mat, there we go. So, back to the, should you wash your fabrics? Let's see, I need two, two and a half, and then two, well one, one and a half. So I will, that's take one aside perfect 
I've got that. Uh, with quilting cotton, so like I was saying before, this fabric right here is um, is from Northcott. It's Northcott Toscana fabric, which is freaking amazing. I love this fabric so much. Let's see, do I have a four and a half? No, I need to cut a four and a half. Okay, so that one's extra. I need five two and a half. So there's two. Four six. So I will take one and set it aside. So there's five and then three one and a half. So I'm actually going to take this big one here and cut two one and a half. Perfect. And that is extra. So with the Toscana, so with this fabric that I use, um, I actually did not pre-wash this at all. You see how bright blue this is? You would think that blue would run whenever you wash it. It doesn't. Most quilting cottons nowadays are made so that they're not going to run. They're not going to shrink. That is the, the old fabrics that you'd have to worry about that. Or if you have fabrics from, from clothing, from other types of sewing. You don't have to worry about that with quilting cottons. If it is a high quality quilting cotton. So if you pick up something from, um, um, from a friend or if you pick up something down at the Goodwill, you don't know the history of that, you better pre-wash it. Uh, now, this does not count batiks. So, like, um, so like Nikki was saying, no, no, you zigzag them to make sure they don't, no, not at all, this is quilting cotton. I'm, no, this is, I'm cutting my pieces. This is it. There's, there's no, there's no zigzag stitching or any of that stuff. You just sew it regular. So with, um, if it's a high quality quilting, quilting cotton, you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you're using a batik, so batiks are sp or a specially dyed process. It actually uses a little bit of wax, which is why batiks um, feel differently. Um, you do have to pre-wash batiks because it's a custom dyed, the, the color is not printed right onto there. So if you take a look, you know, let's take a look at this beautiful blue. That beautiful blue, if you can definitely have a wrong side, so you can see a right side and a wrong side, and you can definitely see that even in the camera, and it's a high quality, you don't have to pre-wash it. If it's a batik, it's going to look the exact same on both sides. You better pre-wash that. Same for um, hand dyed fabrics. Um, there is a company that I adore out of Chicago called Cherrywood Fabrics. Their fabrics are wonderful and so lustrous and so soft, but they're hand dyed. They're hand dyed in Illinois. So you, you better pre wash those too. So the, the thing to keep in mind when pre washing fabrics all or none. If any of your fabrics in your project need pre-washing, pre-wash everything. Because you don't want something to be pre-washed and not, because what if it does shrink just a little bit and you never know? I don't pre-wash anything. Now, if I use something with a batik, I will cut what I need for that um, project and I will pre-wash it. But all of these um, books, cases are full of fabric around me, nothing's pre-washed. All right, so I've got that. Now I need one, what, nope, already cut. You see how fast this goes whenever I've got pieces from previous blocks that I can use? Okay, next is the gray. Oh, a lot of gray, a lot of gray. Okay, we need 11. Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot we need a bunch. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside. Let's iron these. Uh, mistress, not right now, unfortunately, if you want to go to my website, um, if you take a look, if you do exclamation quilt along, it will take you to the quilt along 
website, um, or if you go to quiltoni.com, you can actually take a look at the, the blocks and the quilt along. But I am, we're teaching this block step by step by step. So we do have quilt stores around the world right now full of people that are making this block along with me. So this is set up like a class on Mondays. So unfortunately I can't stop in the middle of what I'm doing and show you something. But like I said, if you take a look there, you can see them. All right, we've got that. And of course, this video is going to be up on YouTube tomorrow, so if anyone wants to go back and re-watch anything, they can. All right, so I'm cutting out, I layered two strips. Remember we've talked about before with the previous blocks? We want to lay our two strips on here. So with each of these strips, I'm now cutting four. So I'm not cutting in, in sets of two anymore, I'm cutting in sets of four. So I need 11. So four and a half, four, eight, one, two, three, four and a half, 12. And let's take one off and set it aside. go. Next, 11, two and a half. Okay, so same thing. I'm cutting in sets of four. Four, eight, twelve. Okay, so I take one, set it aside, and then ten, one and a half. So you know what? I'm going to cut it into sets of two for now because these two are two different sizes. So let's cut it in sets of two. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. And I use that strip perfectly. And we still have a little bit of gray left over. So I'm going to set it aside for the block. But you know what? Let me pick all this up. That's too wide. Let's do this. Let's fold this in half. And then I think it'll be more manageable. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, any questions on the cutting that we've done so far? So we have all of our solids cut out. Hi, Folish, how are you? All right, so now we are finished with page number one. Let's go to page number two. We are now sewing the strips together. So the one and a half inch strips, the one and a half inch strips, we're getting those sewn together. All right, so we need, here's my halves. We need a half tan. to a half blue, half tan, to half bright blue, half tan to half black. And for those of you new to quilting, what I am about to do is stripping. This is whenever you're taking strips and you're sewing them together, which is a lot more efficient and a lot faster. Hey, Ministry, how are you today? Uh, tans of black. For those of you just popping in, don't forget our quilt along. Next week I will be at Gen Con. So I'm driving from Gen Con on Monday. So our quilt along for block number eight is not going to be till Tuesday. It's the only Tuesday in the entire quilt along. So everything else is still a Monday. So next week is Tuesday. Don't forget. All right. So tan to black. I need a blue to bright blue. So a blue to bright blue. And then blue to gray. Blue to gray. And then bright blue, half bright blue to half gray. Yay! 
Yes, they, yes, thank you, ministry. If you, as remember, remember, you can't make it creepy and you can't smell. So ministry is referring to my rules of hugging me. So if you ever see me in person, whether I'm giving a lecture, if I'm teaching, um, if I'm at your quilt guild, your store, a convention, wherever I am, I have rules for giving me hugs and I am a hugger. So I love to hug people. All right, so here is, we should have two left over. You should have a half tan and a half gray left over for your strips. So I'm gonna take these and set them aside. All right, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna sew these strips. And then after I show you how we're gonna show the, we're gonna sew these strips. Oh my God, Marley, he was fast asleep in the chair. Hi. Then I will go over my rules of hugging. Ah. Hi. Hi. Are you, are you a good boy? Yes. Hi. Can I, can I put you down? Can I, can I, can I put you down? I know, I know this is Marley's chair, but I have to do some sewing. I know. This can't be a loving Marley stream, honey. We're doing quilts along today. Because we're doing quilts along, I, I need to stay on track. Okay? All right. Oh, he just like collapses down like, but mommy, no. Yes, yes, Marley has had showers. Okay, so we're going to sew these together. So what you want to do is you want to take your strips and you want to shake them out to make sure that there's nothing folded up in there. Trust me, this is an important step because I just did that last week. I still do it. So make sure you shake it out so you don't have anything tucked up into there that you sew and it's not a good thing. Then you want to take right sides to right sides. Remember what I talked about. There's your right side, there's your wrong side. Your right side is the one with all the color. If you're using batiks, there is no right side. Use whatever side you want as the right side. Okay, so right side to right side. We've got that. And then we're just gonna pop this on in the machine. Okay. Now I'm using a quarter inch foot with guide. So this is a piece of metal right here is my guide. <coughs> Remember, if you touch that piece of metal, you are sewing a perfect quarter inch, but we don't want to sew a perfect quarter inch. We want to sew a scant quarter inch because whenever you iron it open, whenever you iron your seam, that seam is actually uh, catching up and it's catching the thread. So if you sew a quarter, a perfect quarter inch, you're, you're actually going to shrink it just a touch, just a touch. So we wanna go just shy of a quarter inch. So if I'm using my quarter inch piecing foot with guide, I want to sew it just not touching that piece of metal. So it's really close. It's just not touching it. There you go. So just shy. Just like that. And then the next one, I'll show you how I hold it to make sure that the strips are lined up and I can go super fast. So you want to take your strips. Come on. Open. And of course, these are the long strips. There you go. We want to shake those out and put that in there. Now, as I'm holding them, what I do is I take my pointer finger on my right hand and I put it between the two layers of fabric, okay? The rest of my fingers are underneath and my thumb is on top. And what I'm doing way back here is I'm doing this. So I'm actually moving this top fabric so that it's perfectly straight, it's perfectly in line, just like this. There we go. All right, let me cut off my scrap. I'll talk about, um, thank you for po for uh, posting the stuff about chaining, Nikki. I appreciate that. I'll actually show you chaining more and explain it more whenever we're sewing our pieces after our break, later on. All right, so rules for hugging Tony. So I'm a hugger. 
I love hugging. I do not mind hugging people at all. But there are rules to hugging. You must have taken a shower within the past 24 hours. Especially if you're at a convention. It doesn't matter if you've taken a shower that morning. I know I'm still chaining now, which is why I said thanks for popping that in there. It's just easier to show and explain whenever I am doing the pieces. No, 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 not, no, no, not just consent as Lita. No, 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 consent is implied. It, you, yes, you always have consent, but I have additional rules to hugging me. It's not just consent. So, yep, exact, no, 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 number three, no. If you're sick and you've taken showers and you've taken yourself, I, that's fine with me. Number one, shower within 24 hours. That is super important to me. Be clean. Number two, do not smell. I, I can't handle perfumes. I can't handle Axe body spray. I can't, just please don't smell. And that's for, for if you think you smell good, as well as body odor. Please put deodorant on. You think, you think that I, you wouldn't have to tell people to put deodorant on? If you're one of those people that, that is like, really? You have to tell people to put deodorant on? You have, uh, you've never ever been to a convention. Even here, where I live, I know people that don't wear deodorant. I will never give them a hug. Ever. Because they smell. So, please don't smell. So, rule number two is don't smell. Don't smell with, um, with B.O. and don't smell with, uh, um, perfumes, colognes, Axe body spray, things like that. Because that's another thing too. For some reason, there are some people out there that think that they can just put a whole bunch of Axe body spray on themselves and they smell great. No. There are too many people in this world that are sensitive to smells. Don't smell. The third one is don't be creepy. Like, and that... You'd be surprised about about the creepiness. Like, when you're giving me a hug, don't don't do this on my back. Don't don't put your hand in an inappropriate place. And this goes for both girls and guys. Again, you'd be surprised. So if you go no, if you go in for a hug with me. I will almost always hug you back, unless you have broken one of these rules, either now or in the past, or if I just don't feel good. Because as we know, sometimes, even though I'm a hugger and I love hugging people, I just don't feel good. And I'll say that. And I'll tell you. <laughs> no, Looney, that would be creepy. That would be a little bit creepy. <laughs> now, that being said, I also respect other people's space. So I am a huge, now I'm gonna show you what to do for here and then I'll keep, I'll finish with my story. All I'm doing now is I'm separating the, the, um, the sewn together pieces and then I'm folding it in half and cutting it. This is all of them, the half strips as well as the full strips. So I'm, cut, I'm folding everything in half and then cutting it in half. Yes, no nibbling on the ears either. I agree. I agree. So it is, um, so whenever I want to hug, whenever I see someone, I'm like, ah, let me hug you. I do this. Okay? And I stand there. No, ministry, that's not awkward. You'd, uh, you would be surprised, ministry, how many random people I get that will come up and give me hugs. And I've never met them before. Because they know they know me. I don't know them, but they know me. And I'm I'm okay with this. I am okay with this. Whenever I give lectures at Quilt Guild, 
I will actually stand there and go down and have people go down and give me a hug line so I can hug everyone. I'm, I'm okay with this. I am perfectly okay with this. So it is, um, so I will, if I want to hug you, I stand there like this. So if you want to give someone a hug, this is the universal language of, I want to hug you. Okay. Because remember some people like personal space. You should never, ever, ever, ever feel forced to give anyone a hug. Just because I love hugs and I do not mind people giving me hugs at all, even if they're strangers. You know the people that say free hugs? I, I go and I give them hugs. So it is <laughs> hug line. <laughs> oh, ministry, you're funny. So it is, um, it is perfectly okay with me, by the way. If you are not a hugger, I actually was talking to someone yesterday here in the stream who has frail bones. So if you are not a hugger, it is perfectly okay to say, no, thank you. If you want to turn that into a fist bump, if you want to turn it into an elbow bump, if you're a germaphobe, you are perfectly fine with telling me, okay. No, you don't have to curtsy first, Maz. I am not royalty. You're funny. There we go. So that's why whenever they came in, they said, hey, I've had a shower. Can I have a hug? Because of my, my rules. All right. So let's, let's show you some ironing. So we have everything, we have everything folded and cut in half. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, Maz. It's fine. Uh, so this is what we're going to do now. If you take a look at the directions, the directions tell you to iron the seams in opposite directions. So what does this mean? This means lay both of the sides out and you're going to iron it in opposite directions. So this is how we're going to iron it. Um, this one, I'm going to iron that way. So our seam is actually pointing towards the blue. See how our seam points up? Our seam goes towards the blue. In this case, it's going to go towards the gray. So same exact strip, we're just ironing it so that it's going towards the blue and going towards the gray. So that's what that means by ironing it in opposite directions. Okay. So first we're going to lock in, lock in our seam. Now, for those of you that are regular quilters, you may be used to ironing your seams open. Please do not do that for my patterns. My patterns, you need to iron them in one direction or another. So in this case, you need to iron this towards the blue. In this case, we need to iron this towards the gray. So we're ironing in opposite directions and we have them in there. And the reason for that is the pixel quilts that are actually based upon locking in those seams. So if your seams are locked in and line up perfectly, you will get a perfect point every single time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one, the one on the left, and I'm gonna flip it over this one. So that's, you see the picture right there of nesting the seams. And that's the picture you see in the pattern. So we have it like this. So where you have this one on top, the seam is going down. The one on the bottom, the seam is going up. Okay. And then I'm going to move it around so I can take my fingers and feel to make sure that this right here is lined up perfectly. There we are. I know, right? Right, foolish? Oh my gosh. A perfectly, a, a good locked seam is i agree it, it, it is it's ecstasy it's amazing it is amazing so we're making sure that this is locked in so now whenever we talk about nesting those seams later on you see how what this is so in this case the seams going towards the blue in that case it's going towards the gray so if i were to sew this i would get a perfect point every single time every single time all right so let's cut this all right, so we're going to cut this one. All right, let's move this again because I've transferred it from the iron to the mat. So it, it loosened up a little bit. Make sure I've got that. 
And yes, I use my nails a lot. They're actually attacks right off because I use them as a quilting tool. Alright, so we're locked. We're doing this. Now, I need to, for the bright blue and gray, this is not blue gray, this is bright blue colored gray. There we go. I need two sets of two and a half. And remember, we're cutting it in sets of two. So this tells me two sets for a total. So that's a two and a half. Now I'm going to cut a five. Uh, Jordan, I, my, uh, my kid just popped in the chat. Your laundry is done. You like that segue, people? You like that segue? All right, so now what I'm going to do, and this is going to set myself up for success later on. I'm going to take this top one and I'm going to set it into a pile. And then I'm going to take this bottom one and put it into another pile. Because this pile, my seams are going towards the gray. This pile, my seams are going towards the blue. So it's easier whenever I'm pulling my pieces later to lay it all out for the pattern. I can easily see it. Okay, so let's do it. So we got that one and we got that one. All right, now, same thing. I need one set of one and a half. Now, I'm not going to stop and go back and forth here on end. Okay, this is extra, so I can set that aside. And then I'm going to lay these right on top. There we go. And I've got those. Oh, you know what? I still have this fabric sitting over here. I'm going to get rid of this fabric. I don't need it anymore. All right, next. This is the blue gray. So that last one was the bright blue gray. Same thing, this is a long piece. I'm just gonna iron one at a time. Now, I make it easier whenever I cut my pieces in half. You get the most out of your strips and it's the easiest of your strips if the part that you've cut in half is on your left. Okay, nope, that's perfectly fine. No, because they know, because these are the professional streams that are going on to YouTube and that I'm teaching these the classes right now from the quilt stores. Both her and my husband know they better be quiet and better not have extraneous and little noises. So I'm sure she doesn't want the sound of the door opening and her coming down the steps. But she was very polite whenever she put her laundry in earlier. She made sure to turn off the alerts. That she turned off the sounds. All right. So any questions on this step on actually on cutting the combined pieces? For the most part, I think because we're on week we're on block number seven. I think we're because we're on block number seven. Everyone's basically got it. I don't, we have, we're not getting a lot of these questions unless we have new people popping in. But remember, please feel free to ask questions. Okay, so this is blue and gray. I need three sets. So one, two, three. And then I need four sets. One, two, three, four. You see how fast this is? I love this ruler. I know, Maz, right? Like, this ruler makes it go so fast. And this is why I say, I try to slow myself down so people can keep up that are making this with along with me. But, there's no way, there's no way that you're going to be able to keep up in, in, with the cutting unless you've got one of these things. Alright, so, let's separate them into the two piles. There we are, and then set that aside. Next, what color do I, oh, now I've got the blue slash bright blue. There you go. Blue slash bright blue. 
bright blue. Yes, I know, George. It's the camera. It's the camera. Nothing I can do. That's the way the camera is made. But I appreciate it. You know the known, the known flaw with this camera about whenever I'm over there, I'm kind of out of focus a little bit? She was just pointing that out. Okay, blue, bright blue. Perfect, there we go. Okay, we've got three. One, whoops. I shifted it, so I'm immediately going to do this and start over again. Because I do not want to miss cuts. One, two, and I've already done one, so that's three, okay? And then four sets. One, two, three, four. Now, if you are doing, and I just realized I probably need to bring some uh, extra um, rotary cutters with me, or rotary blades on my trip, because I'm gonna be gone a while. So I've got some lovely Martelli replacement blades. Set that in my to-do pile. Um, the only thing is if you have good rotary blades, and this is what it reminded me. Whenever you're using your stripology ruler, if you're cutting, and you actually cut off a chunk of plastic, that is perfectly natural, perfectly fine. Just redo that cut. And it will, if, if that happens, you're gonna gouge your blade a little bit, so you may have to replace it. But that's fine. It's, you will, can't ministry. You will cut off a little piece of plastic because what you're doing, remember, you're running it and running it and running it. So it's gonna catch some and you cut have it off. just followed Quiltoni. Your taste Twiggy. must be exquisite. Thank you so much for that follow, Twiggy. I appreciate you. Okay, so we've got that. Next up. Same exact thing we're doing. We've got this one towards the tan, this one towards the black. I'm gonna take my left piece, flip it over onto my right, and move it to my cutting mat. And then now, let's make sure that it's perfectly lined up, and we have those uh, those nested seams locked in. All right, so black and tan. I need, oh, just one, just one, two, just one set of one and a half, and that's it. And set that aside. Here we go. Is this it? Is this my last? Nope, I got two more. Two more sets. So this one's the bright blue and tan. Oh yeah, the last one is the blue and tan. Oh, you know what I forgot to do at the beginning of the stream? I only, I've been talking about the, the level of the block, about which blocks are harder to do than others. This block is right in the middle. There's, so remember last week, it was an easy block, but there was a lot of different colors because we did the puzzle Tetras, inspired by Tetris. So this block is just right in the middle. It's just a regular average block. It has the average number of colors, and it's not that hard. It's not the easiest. It's not the easiest like the coins. Remember the coins was the absolute easiest that we were ever going to do. And finish that baby in what, like three hours? All right, so this is bright blue and tan. So just one set, one set of one and a half, right? Yep. You know, the other reason why I like the stripology ruler, less chance of uh, cutting your fingers. Because sometimes if you're holding that ruler and it shifts, it's easy to cut your fingers. So it's, there's less chance that you'll cut anything. So I normally recommend 
the stripology rulers to young sewers that are doing it for the first time. There we are. All right, and this is our last one we're cutting. So this is blue. Blue and tan. So one and one. One and one. Any questions on what we're doing so far? One and one. All right. And that's, whoops, whoops. I took that with it. And that's it for cutting. So we can take our rulers, put them away and put our rotary cutters away. Okay, I'm still gonna keep that up there. In fact, you know what, let me put it over here. All right, let's set ourselves up to do the next step to do the layouts. So now we are on step number four. Time to lay out all the pieces. So, that this is my, um, my guide so I can see exactly where I am in the pattern. There we are. There we are, I think I can see everything now. Perfect, okay. Oh, and remember I was saying the past couple of weeks I was deciding if I wanted to bring this mat with me, my lovely fantastic Martelli mat that they gave me. I, I've been experimenting on this map and doing all sorts of things to see if I want to back the company. And I do. I think I'm going to go ahead and sign up with them as an affiliate because this is this is my favorite map in the entire world. It is fantastic. Uh, so I, I am going to take this with me on the road. So I will have this with me at Tomorrow's Treasures. Okay. Let's lay everything out. So I've got that. We're going to start with row number one. So let's lay out all of our pieces. Marley, okay, all right. Oh, uh, Marley says, come on, love me, mommy. Mwah. Hi. Is this, do you, are you upset because you win a Marley love stream? I know. I know, yes. Marley's like, but mommy, mommy, you need to pay attention to me. You're such a good boy. All right, you can have your chair back. All right, and there, let's do our gray. All right, and then, whoops, that is trash. Okay, so now, now what I'm doing is I'm laying all of my pieces out so I can easily grab them and move them over. Yes, yes, Marin, he's helping me slow down so you guys can keep up to me. So I'm gonna split out both my two and a half and my one and a half inch pieces. There you go. There we are. So all of my pieces are laid out. So it's easier for me to reach over and grab them and then put them into place. All right, so we're gonna start at the top. We're gonna to start with row number one. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna skip ahead. Oh, there is one. Step number five, sew together the one piece that needs to be assembled horizontally. Uh-oh. I see a typo. That needs to be assembled horizontally. Not need, needs. Yeah. I gotta remember to do that before we put this into book form. All right, so I'm gonna take a, so this is row number four. Okay, so we need a gray on top. And then we need a combo blue, bright, light, bright blue. Now, row four, my arrow is going to the left, so it needs to go towards the blue. Because remember, that's what those arrows are for. 
That's what those arrows are for. They're teaching, they're telling me which way my seams need to go within that row. And in this case, my seams need to go to the left. All right, so let's flip this up. I'm gonna pin it in the center first where that seam is so my seam doesn't flip when I go to sew it. And then I'm gonna pin the sides. All right, so let's move this back over here. And I'm just gonna, it's only a single one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stand while I sew this so I don't have to disturb Marley. Same thing as before. I'm sewing it a scant quarter inch. So it's just to the left of that piece of metal. So scant quarter inch. go. Now, you're going to see what I did in a bit. Don't sew your pins. All right, let's iron it. I'm ironing up towards the gray. It honestly doesn't make a difference which way you iron it. I just find it's easier to iron towards the solid color. All right, and we've got our combined piece. Oh, let me show it to you since it's hiding behind the chat. There's our combined piece for row number four. All right, let's lay everything out. After we finish laying everything out and pinning it, we'll go ahead and take a quick 10 to 15 minute break um, before we start actually sewing it and combining it together. All right, so row number one. I'm actually gonna lay them out here in the middle for the top up there before I move it up. All right, so we have that, we have this. Now, when I lay my pieces out, I lay them out in groups of two. So in this case, I have that piece and I have this piece. So I lay them out in those groups of two because those are the two I'm going to be sewing together. So I just set them together just like that. And then next, I've got that one. And then I've got a combo of the blue and the gray, gray on top. Now, this is where we're gonna hit our first nesting of the seams. Remember, this is how we get our perfect points, is making sure our seams are in opposite directions. So in this case, my seam is going down towards the blue. So this next one is a gray and bright blue combination. I need to have that seam going up because it needs to be in opposite directions. So up towards the gray, so a gray and bl bright blue Stay there, where the seam is going up towards the gray. And I got it. And then, so that means the next one, the blue-gray combo needs to go down towards the blue, which is this one right here. Okay, and then I need this. And then I need this. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and pin these together. So, row number one. Remember, we need to keep these arrows in mind. The arrows are the way that the seam needs to go. And that is important for nesting whenever you're combining your rows together. I know, baby. He, do you see, he's trying, he's trying to reach, he's trying to lean up to reach me so I pet him. I know, you're a good boy. So in this case, you are really needy today, you know that. He, he's doing the whole, yes, you're very cute. Mwah. I love you very much. All right, so back to sewing. Row number one. With row number one, our seams, our arrows going to the right. So our seam needs to go to the right. So if my seam is going to the right, which piece am I flipping over onto the other one? If that's also the way I'm going to iron it. Remember when I was showing you those rows and I was and I was showing you that the top one is the one that it's going to go towards. Oh my gosh, he jumped down just so I'd pick him up again. So if this are the two pieces I'm going to pin together, which one do I need to flip over the other one? Am I flipping right over left or am I flipping left over right if my seam needs to go to the right? 
So Nikki says, to the right means right over left. That is absolutely correct. Mwah. So I'm going to be taking this right piece, flipping it over to the left, because remember, this is what's on top. So if I iron this, it's going to go like this. So our seam is going to go to the right. So an easy way that I remember how it's done is if the seam goes to the right, right over left. So right over left. If the seam is to the left, then left over right. So whichever way that arrow is pointing, that's the piece that you pick up and you flip over top of the other piece. Everyone got that? Now, if you mess it up, it's not a problem. Just look at your pattern and see which way you should be ironing it before you actually iron it. It's not a big deal. This is just saving a step. I am all about efficiency in quilting and sewing and making it easy. And this makes it easy if you do it that way. All right, so next. There, there. Now, from here on in, that's towards the tan, so we need to go towards the blue. All you're doing is just finding the pieces and laying them out and then pinning them together. and then gray, gray and blue. All right, now we have a low, our very first lonely little piece. We have a piece right here that's not being combined with any other piece. All right, now in this case, we've got arrow to the left. So arrow to the left means left over right and pin it into place. So this lonely little piece is not being pinned and combined with another piece at the moment. So that's perfectly fine. Sometimes fabric pieces need to be alone. It, the fabric pieces need to be single. It is perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with anything wanting to be left alone for a little bit. Now, this is only for this first pass though, because the next time that we are doing this pinning, we're gonna make sure that we include that lonely little piece. Because we always, always, always want to include everything. Now, the reason why I word it this way and I talk about it that way is to remind you that having a leftover piece is okay. Just don't leave that same piece out every single time. Because if you do, you will have a lopsided row when you go to do your final sewing. So all I'm going to do is take this lonely little piece and bring it over and just leave it right there. So I'm just leaving it right there for now. All right, row three. And we bring it down here. So all of these little things that I tell you, the little tricks of how to remember stuff, this is how I remember it. I love this blue so much. I think this blue is my second favorite next to the purple. Okay, and then one of these. Now, if anyone wanted to know, <coughs> excuse me, why I picked certain fabrics. Oh, we have another lonely little piece. That's okay. It's okay. All right, this is going to the right. So right over left and pin it into place. And Nikki has nightmares about me saying this over and over and over. Right over left and pin it into place. Marley, stay down here, please. I will let you outside in a second, but I have that door closed. I know. There we are, we've got that. Yeah, no, the, the, the Toscana line of fabrics is gorgeous. It is an amazing, awesome line of fabric. Aw, thanks, Nikki. Although you did admit to me that you have nightmares of that. Right over left and pin it into place. See, but whenever you make a pattern like this, you're never going to forget. And we've got our lonely little piece we're just going to set on the end. 
I have been looking for a very long time for a line of fabrics that are as nice and as rich as these Toscanas are. And they're amazing. They are so nice with the, um, the video game ah. comic book type fabric. Marley, he's barking at the cat. Leave the cat alone. <sighs> and then blue. Oh, we have our combined piece right here. So there's our combined piece that we already sewed. Now this is going up towards the gray, so the next one needs to go down towards the blue. So down towards, whoops. There we go, down towards the blue. Perfect. Perfect, Marley, uh-uh, come here. Stay down here. Oh, that you hear it in your dreams? Yes, Marley is a good boy. Come here. Stay there. You can go into your bed, but you stay here. It's not time for a break yet. Okay, and then we've got that one. And that one. So whenever I was picking these colors, that's what I was talking about. When I was picking these colors towards the blue, so this needs to go towards the gray. This is the block that I use to pick the blues. Because this block is inspired by Mega Man. And anyone that is a Mega Man fan knows that there is a certain shade of blue that you have to have for Mega Man. Right, so arrow goes to the left, so left over right, and pin it into place. Left over right, and pin it into place. Yes, yes, Marley is a good strimmer. Marley is a good strimmer, boy. He, he is now strimmer. So because of that, because we had to have some nice shades of blue for the Mega Man, that's what I picked first. I actually went through and I picked um, Mario Red, Link Green, and Mega Man Blue, Metroid Purple, and I think that's it. I think that was what I, I based them on, and then everything else was just which shades and hues all match and go together. Ooh, I need a, I forgot, I need to reach out to um, Northcott again and get a fabric swatch book. I have not gotten one yet for the Toscanas. There we are. All right, row number five. This is our halfway row. We have nine rows, so we are now, we're doing our halfway. We're laying them out. All right, blue and gray. Blue. Blue and gray. That's towards the blue, so this needs to go towards the gray. Uh-oh, I have my first case of I need to go towards the gray, and this goes towards the light, the bright blue. So, what do you do in this case? You just re-iron it. So, all I'm gonna be doing by re-ironing this, let me warm that back up again, is the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron the back. So this needs to go towards the gray. No, you don't panic, Nikki. You don't panic at all. So let's iron this towards the gray. And then now I'm gonna turn this over and iron this side towards the gray. There we go. And as you can see, it now goes towards the gray. As easy as that. All right, so gray, so it needs to go towards the gray. Well, you know, well, Looney, maybe maybe you should carry your towel with you at all times because remember, the towel helps us to not to panic. So maybe you should go and grab your towel. And for those of you that are not nerds like us, you don't you may not know where that's from. And that's okay. Alright, so we've got that. And this one. Alright, some combined ones. I just grabbed the first one, so that's going towards the blue, so I need to go towards the bright blue. And then a gray. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so to the right. Thank you so much for picking.
picking up that pattern, I appreciate you. So going to the right, I'm taking that right piece, flipping it over the left piece, and pinning it into place. For those of you new to my stream, or if you're watching on YouTube for the first time, that cha-ching means someone has purchased something from my online store. Probably a pattern, probably this block. Ah, Maz! I love it! Maz, that's perfect! That is perfect. For those of you who don't know who Looney Loom Works is, he's an amazing, awesome, fantastic other streamer here on Twitch. He is a weaver. So his specialty is weaving rugs, and it's pretty darn cool. He was, actually can weave with almost any material. So the joke about he can't find his towel because he's already woven it, that, that's that's on point. Nice job. That's on point. Okay, and then remember, row number five is to the right, so I'm picking that right piece over the left piece and pinning it into place. towards the blue so this needs to go towards the blue for the blue and the bright blue and blue combo and then towards the blue towards the bright blue towards the gray with the blue and gray towards the blue and gray and gray Fantastic. Okay, this is going to the left. So left piece over right piece and pinning it into place. Any questions on this block or quilting in general? and pinning it into place. You guys got it. I don't know why I keep asking if you guys have any any questions. Everyone seems to have it. How are you, Star Killer? There we are. So left over right. And pin it into place. which way your uh, seam points because it's not being next it's not sitting next to another piece that has a seam okay and then here and then there and then a lonely little piece it's been a while since we've had a lonely little piece but that's okay that's okay fantastic that's awesome star killer all right so row number seven we are pointing to the right so you want to pick up that right piece, flip it over the left, and pin it into place. All right, there's only two more rows to go. We are on row number seven. When we have laid out and pinned all nine rows, we will take a quick 10 to 15 minute break so that if you are taking a class, you can stand up and stretch and go to the bathroom. If you are watching on YouTube, I will edit out the break. So unlike the first three weeks, you do not have to worry about fast forwarding. Eventually I may go back and redo those first few weeks. All 
Okay, and then we have our lonely little piece we just want to set aside right there. All right, row number eight. Next to last row. So you should be starting to run out of pieces at this point. that one and then light blue and gray all right i went towards the light blue so i need to go towards the blue for the combo and then a blue and then gray fantastic all right and then row number eight is to the left so we want to pick up those left pieces, flip it over the right, and pin it into place. Okay, left over right. Pin it into place. Pin it into place. There we go. All right, row number nine. I need that one. That one's going towards the blue, so this one needs to go towards the gray. And then that one. And then our last two here, that's towards the blue. This needs to go towards the gray. And then this right here. All right, so you notice how we have a couple of leftover pieces over here. You should have that one, that one, this one, this one, and this one left over. That is perfectly natural to have these pieces left over. Just add them to your pile of ones that we want to pull for future blocks. Yes. Yes, I do, Jordan. I absolutely, so Z Awesome Fish Sticks, for the of you that do not know, is the kid, is the child. She's not really a child anymore. She, she, she's 17. So, and, uh, the kid will be coming with me to Gen Con. So, this is, George, this is what, your fourth Gen Con you're coming with me to? So, you actually get to meet the kid as well as me if you go to Gen Con. This is the only convention that she comes with me. Alright, so this is to the right. So, row number nine. Arrow points to the right, so we're going to take that piece up on the right and flip it over the left and pin it into place. So, to answer your question, George, yes. Yes. I absolutely do that every single time whether i'm streaming or not every single time so right over left and pin it into place because that's how i remember to do it correctly yes nikki you you have been doing this parenting thing twice very 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 correctly yes it's funny, whenever um, I have quilts like this that have blocks of different games, um, or if kids are just looking through my book of all of the quilts that I offer, and they point out and they start naming all the games or start naming all the pop culture things and they get them correctly, I always look at the parents and tell them, good job, good parenting. All right, lonely little piece. I'm going to set that right there. And that's it. All right, now, our group of leftover things i'm just going to set over here above my uh my pattern just for right right now okay you, out loud most of the time out loud sometimes i say it in my head but most of the times i say it out loud there's nothing wrong with this 
All right, at this point, we have all nine of our rows laid out and pinned. So let's take a quick 10 to 15 minute break. I'm gonna put bloopers on. So if you like watching my bloopers, my bloopers are gonna be on. When I come back from the bloopers, then we will get started on sewing these rows. We're gonna sew them all together. So I shall return. You ready to get back to sew? You ready to get back to the block? So this is, again, block number seven, Meg Android. <sighs> Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. So, what, oh, you know what? I should be doing this one. I should be doing this one. That way I can show you. Okay. Where is your fabric? I know. I'm going to find your fabric. So you can sit over here on the end. Oh, there's your fabric. Look, your fabric fell down. Here. Here, why don't you lay on your fabric? Okay, you, I'm not gonna give you anything, come here. Why don't you lay on your fabric? There you go. You, you don't wanna lay on your fabric, do you? Is it, gonna, is it gonna be one of those streams? Is it gonna be one of those streams? Yes, apparently so. All right, so I'm gonna show you from here the first row that I'm going to uh, sew, and that is just so you can see exactly what I do from the back and the forward, even though you can't see what's going on right here. But I'm going to change camera angles, so whenever I, whoops, let me put my stream deck on, there we go. So whenever I do the, the up close one, you'll be able to see what's going on and she doesn't block it, so it'll be fine. So don't worry about the, the front camera so much as what I'm doing. So I'm going to reach back into here, so you see my hand back here? And I'm gonna grab row number one. And I'm gonna bring row, row number one around. No, this is, look, this is not for you. It's not treats. It's not treats. It's nothing you can rub against either. No. And then I'm gonna sew these. Remember, I'm sewing them with a scant quarter inch. Okay? So I'm sewing with a scant quarter inch. So this makes sure that it's going to be a perfect quarter inch after I do it. Uh, no, not yet, Nikki. Well, after her next round of blood work, then we can give her some treats, I think. So she's finally starting to heal. So when I get back from the six week away trip, when I get back from Dragon Con, basically, she's getting another round of blood work and then we can possibly give her treats at that point. All right, so I've got row number one finished so i'm going to reach back grab row number two and move forward now i am chain sewing at this point and i'll explain chain sewing after i finish okay so i've got row number two i've got the first piece in now it's important that you you trim row number one or i'm sorry row nine this is row nine and row eight that you trim row nine away from row eight as soon as you have a single piece in there so you don't forget. Do you know how many times I have just continued to sew and sew and sew and sew and then that's like, oh, oh crap, that's right. Oh, um, yeah, there's a couple rows in there. So just keep it, it just train yourself to actually trim it whenever you put the next row in, all right? So now I'm gonna separate these. So chain this, is the cutting gizmo it's by gypsy quilter it actually separates my chained pieces really easy and like i said i'll go into chaining more nikki put the um definition up i'll go into chaining more in a moment we are switch those can you hear her with how loud she's purring i know i love you too all right, so now this is row number nine. So this is going back here, and all I'm doing is putting it exact same place that I pulled it from, okay? So we're taking this, we're sewing it, and then we're putting it back, okay? Everyone's got that? All right, let's show you the close up, and let me show you chain piecing. So remember, I'm doing a scant quarter inch so I want to, with chain piecing, you want to free this piece before, take this next piece, I'm going to lift up my presser foot, have the piece of fabric touch 
the needle, and then sew. So chain piecing is basically when you have something in your machine at all times. And yeah, she just took a swipe at me. So chain... <laughs> She's over there. She's sitting on her fabric. She's not, she's not so happy with me anymore. So chain piecing, you have something in your machine at all times. And yes, that's why we have that, uh, that lovely Hestia emote of her swiping me. So something in your machine at all times. This does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it speeds up sewing. So it's more efficient and faster for sewing. That's our first piece for row number seven, so I'm going to trim it. So I, I cut that, and then I'm going to pull this away. So it speeds up your sewing. No, nope, she's still purring over there. Now she's right next to the mic. Never work with animals or kids, people. Oh my gosh. Well, she's starting to lay down at least. So she may take a nap, hopefully. All right, so I'm chain sewing is efficient. So it's good to do because it speeds it up. It also saves, so in addition to saving time, it also saves thread because you're not using as much thread. So that's important. Um, the other thing that it does is it locks your seams. So you see how my seam is right here? Now, if I were to start sewing right there, this part right here would start to open. It's not doing that. It's locked in. So that's the nice thing about chain piecing is you're locking those seams in and you're creating a, a better, a better sewn piece. I don't know, I'm trying How do I word that one? How do I word the, the locking it in? It's chain piecing. <laughs> I'm defining words with the word. That's, that's never good. That's never good. All right, so something else you may have noticed I'm doing. Kids, do as I say, not as I do. Please do not sew over your pins. It is a horrible habit that I have. I started doing it when I learned how to sew. And I, I just, I can't seem to sew without sewing over my pins. So please don't sew over your pins. It is a horrible, horrible thing. Yes, yes. Mistress, it is a horrible, horrible habit. You should not sew over your pins. But I do it. So. What are the reasons? Why do you not want to sew over your pins? What are the reasons behind not sewing over the pins? Exactly, Nikki. It can throw your machine timing off in your machine. So you could damage your sewing machine. Now, for this machine, this is the only machine I sew pins over. I won't do it with my other machine. But this machine is a cheap machine. It is a very, very inexpensive machine. It is not, it is not expensive at all. This machine cost me about $100. So it's a cheap machine. Um, so if I damage the timing, it is my own fault and it's perfectly fine and you know what if i can't fix it myself i will just buy another one because it's only about a hundred dollars um it's not a very expensive machine at all it's not a very gr it's not a good machine soleil stay down here but it's you know it's one of those things where it's like eh, it is what it is right so you could throw your timing off you could damage your machine and that could cause um expenses that could cause expenses. Soleil, what are you doing? Soleil. Hey, come over here. What are you doing? Go lay down. 
She's walking around everywhere. Go lay down. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> oh, animals. Don't work with animals or kids. So the other thing that we were talking about, the other thing it can do is you could hit the pin with your needle. You could break your needle and shards of the metal could go flying. Do not do that. Do, please, please, please. If you have not already learned how to sew, please learn how to sew without sewing over your pins. It is a horrible habit that I have. It's not a good habit at all. But I recognize the danger in what I'm doing. And I do it anyways. I know, there are some people that, uh, that I drive crazy because they're like, no, I can't watch you do this thing. I can't watch you sew over your needles. My needles, sew over your pins. Oh my gosh, words are hard. Words are very hard. I, finding the right word is very hard sometimes. All right, what row are we on? One, two, hey, look, I'm getting ready to sew row number three. We are making some good progress. It, they are hard, Nikki. There we go. Perfect, all right. We've got that one. Is there anything else I needed to go over? Oh, pass it. So whenever I am sewing the rows, um, I sew what I call different passes. So pass number one, that's what I'm doing right now. It's basically whenever you sew that. After we're done with this, I'm gonna iron, lay out, and repin each of the rows. Whenever I sew that row, that time, that's pass number two. So it's basically every single time I go through all the rows, that's called a pass. Now, there are some people that do not have as much table space as I do. That's okay. I don't know if I've ever addressed this before with the quilt along yet. If you do not have a lot of space to sew, you can completely sew just one row at a time if you want. So I do that with larger projects where I will sew four or six rows and sew it all together, combine all the rows and everything, and then do the next four or six rows. So it's perfectly fine to just do row by row by row. Now, whenever I start pass number two, I will show you the ironing and laying out and pinning, but then I'm also going to make sure that we include those lonely little pieces. Because remember, we've got a bunch of pieces that are laying out there all by themselves, those lonely little pieces. We've got to include them on the next pass. Because you don't want to have funky uh, rows. We want to make sure that we're assembling these rows nicely. And if you leave the same piece out every single time, you're going to have the super long strip and then this piece on the end. That you're sewing on. It's a lot easier to just include them. All right, so this is row number one that is in my machine. So I'm gonna use my scrap fabric to get it out. Because remember, when we are doing the piecing, when we're doing our chain sewing with our piecing, something constantly in the machine. And if I want to free row number one, uh, yes, Tired Ewok, I actually explained it earlier when I was doing the strips. Um, a scant quarter inch is just shy. So in this case, my piece of metal right here, if it's touching the piece of metal, it's a perfect quarter inch. If I'm just to the left of it, it's a scant. So that's Bit, a little bit under that quarter inch. So that's what that is. And then some machines, if you have a, a good quality 
nice expensive machine, then you can actually program and, and move your needle to the left or to the right a little bit in order to get it that scant quarter inch. I cannot do it, oh I can, can I do it with mine? No, that's the width of the stitch. I know, I can't do it with mine, so it's a cheap machine. Yeah, so with some machines you can actually move it left or right, and no, remember what I said, there are, feel free to ask questions at any time, just because you weren't here at that point doesn't mean that I'm not going to say it again. Okay, let's do some ironing. So I'm going to take row number nine. And I'm gonna lay my pieces out. Oh, I forgot to get water. All right, let's see if I can do this without water. I may have to run and get some water. I forgot. I forgot. Man, what's up with that, right? What's up with not getting water? Okay, so at this point, oh, I want to, let me show you. Now, remember, I laid it down exactly how I pieced it. I didn't do any, I, I pinned it and sewed it. Didn't do anything else except for lay it down. So remember, we want to lock in our seams and then iron up. And then iron up. Now remember what I said about those perfect points. If you if you layer it in a way, if you nest those seams perfectly you're gonna get a perfect point. And it should look just like that. Oops. See how nice that point is? And that's because those seams are nested. See how they're in the opposite directions? So that's what you want. That's what you wanna aim for, is getting those nested nicely. Now, just because that one's perfect doesn't mean they're all gonna be perfect. All right? After we do that, we wanna make sure that we lay it out. So this is row number nine. So this is seams go, arrow goes to the right. Oh wait, let me go to the mat, sorry. Wrong camera. So we would seams go to the right. So I'm gonna lay this out. I have one, two, three, four, five pieces. All right, so I have five pieces. Now remember, now this is all going to the right. Remember what I said, we need to include this lonely little piece right here. And I have an odd number. So if I just start assembling them right here, I'm not gonna include that lonely little piece. So what I need to do is take this first one and set it aside. So I need to set it right there. And then let's go ahead and pin these. So the arrow goes to the right, so I'm picking up right over left and pinning it into place. Okay, right over left. Now we've included that lonely little piece, making sure it was correct. My lonely little piece was actually, uh, had the wrong side up, not the right side. And pinning it into place. All right, and that's row number nine. All right, let's do row number eight. All right, so I'm gonna switch to that camera. If anyone needs me to do a close up of the iron or the mat, while I'm doing this, let me know. And I'll switch it. Oops, I forgot to lock my seams in. I just started doing that recently because I've realized it helps with the warping of the fabric. But for, I'm always, a, I'm like, I'm not gonna try something if it takes extra time unless I really know it. it's helpful. Because I'm all about, you know, speed quilting, efficiency, let's get stuff done fast. This helps, it actually helps with the warping. I didn't understand why you did it until I started, uh, until I tried it. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, I want to do that. All right, so this is seams go to the left. Now, while I'm laying these pieces out, I'm not just counting them. I'm looking at my pattern and making sure that I haven't messed up and I haven't flipped a piece because, because we know how I am. Okay, let's be honest. We know how Tony is. Tony flips pieces all the time, even on her own patterns. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. We have an even number of pieces. I don't have to worry about leaving anything out. All right, so to the left. So left over right and pin it into place. Good night, Miss.
sisters, thank you for being here. Welcome to our community. All right, left over right, and pinning it into place. Left over right, and pin it into place. There we go. All right, next. Row number seven. And this is really all we're doing until we assemble all these rows and we start putting the rows together. Is we're just taking each row up. Oops, dang it, come on. Ironing, pinning, and sewing. Ironing, pinning, sewing. Just, be, just one after the other, over and over and over until it's a solid row. Four. Okay, this is to the right. There we go. All right, this is to the right. So I have one, two, three, four, five pieces. Remember what I said. We want to make sure to include this lonely little piece over here. So right over left, we want to leave this one alone. Leave that first piece alone. Take these two right over left, pin it into place. Hey, so far it looks like, and I don't remember this pattern, so I don't remember if it's gonna be like this the entire time or not, but so far it looks like the most we have in a row after pinning it is three pieces, which is great. It means that I only need one more pass before they're rows. There we go. All right, row number six. Yes, I know, but you're, you can't go upstairs, honey. I have the door closed. So like, come on, go lay back down. Go lay down. Now, for those of you that weren't here at the beginning of the stream, okay, row number six is to the left. Uh, this is the last stream here in my home studio for six weeks. One, two, three, four, five. All right, this one's a, a is, is an issue. We have five pieces, we have an odd number of pieces, but we didn't have a lonely little piece before. What I'm going to do though, is still leave the first piece out because I want to make sure that I keep it consistent through the entire pass. The last pass, I left that last piece out. This pass, I need to leave the first piece out. So we're just leaving this first piece alone and the arrows go to the left. So I'm picking left over right and then pinning into place. Does that make sense? Does everyone see why I left this first piece here? So anyways, as I was saying, this is the last stream that I have in my studio for six weeks. I will be on the road, so the next few blocks I will be doing on the road. I'll actually be streaming from Tomorrow's Treasures in Maryland. It's an amazing, awesome, fantastic quilt store. If you are in the Maryland, Virginia, DC area, if you are doing the quilt along, if you would like to take a class live with me, you can sign up for the class at Tomorrow's Treasures and join me at the store. And next week is a different time or different day. Same time, different day. We've been doing Mondays, every single Monday for our quilt along. Next week it is Tuesday. So if you are making this with me live, this is to be right. If you're making these with me live, I will not be streaming next Monday. It is actually next Tuesday. So if you're live in a store, if you're joining with me here on Twitch, um, check with your store. They're either going to keep the Monday date and they're just going to have a teacher, 
or they've moved it to Tuesday. If you're watching live on YouTube, because there are some stores, oops, I forgot to count, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one alone and take pieces two and three. And then see the arrow goes to the right, so right over left. So if you are taking this class on YouTube, so if you're watching the video after we're live here on Twitch, your class should not change. Your class should still be the same exact day and time. Because I will be able to get the video up and ready because I believe the earliest class that people are doing are Wednesdays. Wednesday, I believe, is the earliest class that's, that's streaming off of YouTube. Here we are. Okay, row number four. Oh, I was counting this one as I was going along. This one has six pieces. So yeah, I think, remember how previous blocks sometimes we would, uh, a couple of rows would need extra passes? I don't think we need that for uh, Mega Android. All right, and then row number four is to the left. So like, I don't know why you keep going up there. I have the door closed. There we go, and it's six pieces. So left over right and pin it into place. Thank you very much for putting the website address for tomorrow's treasures in. If you would like me to teach, give a trunk show or lecture or anything else from your local quilt store or from a quilt guild, have them contact me. I do teach and travel. In fact, I will be going back to Steve's Sew and Back in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania in November. So I already did a lecture there when I was in town for two mini games. They are paying to bring me back again for an entire day. I'll be teaching a class. We'll be doing, so if you're in the Pennsylvania, in the Philadelphia area of Pennsylvania, if you would like to sign up, you can contact Steve's. So for the first half of the day, we are going to be designing our own pixel patterns. So I will be helping you design your own patterns. You can make it as simple or as hard as you like. There's some people I've taught this class that they just make a very simple thing and they get the entire done within the class, the entire design and the quilt finished in the class. And then there are others that design these huge king size quilts. Okay, row number three, we're going to the right. That design these huge king size quilts. And then we basically spend the entire day working on the pattern. So I normally slot three hours. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five, so I'm leaving this first one there right over left because the arrow points to the right and pin it into place. So I normally slot three hours for design where we sit and design your stuff and then have a lunch break. And if I'm teaching at an actual quilt store, you actually go shopping in the quilt store for your fabrics. There we are and row number two. And then the second half after lunch, the second half of the class, I actually help you make your quilt. Now, of course, we do use my book. So we take a look at my book. Okay, this is to the left. So it's left over right. Oh, I'm sorry, there were four. There were four pieces in this row. So left over right, pin into place. So we do use my book. So I actually pass out the book because the book that I have is um, how to design and create your own pixelated patterns. So you can actually take all of the ideas and designs and everything that I do and create it yourself. So when someone basically contacts me, like I had somebody the other day on Twitter that added me in a post and said, hey, if you ever do a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pattern, let me know because I want to buy it. And I'm like, did you know I have a book and you can design it and make it yourself? 
And she said, no, let me buy this thing. But that's what the book is for. So if you want to make a quilt that I don't have a pattern for, you can grab the book and design it yourself. At this moment in time, it is only in paper format. But it will be available as a PDF format before Christmas. <coughs> that is something I am working on right now. All right, so one, two, three, four. And this is to the right, so we want to go right over left and pin it into place. Now, obviously, you can't get a signed copy if it's in PDF format. So the link that is in there for the book is actually to my Amazon page. It is called Designing Block Quilts. Because not many people know what pixels are. So I didn't want to, I, I was supposed to be designing pixel quilts, but I'm not going to get a lot of searches on that, you know, with the pixels, because not a lot of people understand what that word means. There we are. All right. So now I'm going to start sewing it. I'm going to start from the bottom, do the exact same thing I just did before. All right. So let me do this. There we go. So that link is to my Amazon store. I also offer the book for sale on my website. It is not available at this moment because I am leaving tomorrow and I will be gone for six weeks. So if you would like to purchase an autographed copy, it's actually, I believe I only sell for 16 in my shop to help with some of the um, shipping costs. I sell for a little bit less, but of course on Amazon, if you are prime, you get free shipping. So if you buy it from me on my, on my website, I send you a signed copy. You can also get it from me if you see me live at a convention, which Nikki's actually going to do in the next few days. Or of course, if I teach or lecture at your local quilt store or quilt guild or convention. I've got that. So I'm going to be reopening my store. Actually, I don't think I'm only going to be here for two weeks before TwitchCon and New York Comic Con. I may not reopen it again until after New York Comic Con, which is the first weekend of October. Yes. Yes, Maz, you can get a hugged signed copy. If you want, I can hug it and then sign it or sign it, then hug it. It's up to you. Now, of course, if you see me in person, you can always have a hug. But yes, if you would like me to hug the, bo the book, I can do that. Oops, I thought I cut it. At this point, I'm just using scissors to trim because there's only two to three pieces in each row. Now, in fact, let me show you what I've done. All right, so in this case, this is a case where we have, we left that first piece there, and this is what I just sewed. So I have to iron these, this is already ironed, so you see how I separated it? In my mind, it makes it easier to keep track of. go. Oh, I keep forgetting to trim those. I'm used to doing like a whole nother, uh, a whole nother, uh, pass on them. I'm not used to only having two or two and three. So this is, this block is simple in that regard. It's still not as simple as the coins. The coins is a pretty simple block. So if you are new to quilting and you want a really easy block, I do offer a heart block for free. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and you can do that on my website. So if you sign up for my newsletter, then you immediately get an email with a, the copy of the heart block. 
No, I have, you know, I really should send out, I haven't sent one out. I haven't sent a newsletter out since week one of the quilt along. I really should be sending a newsletter out more. I'll try to remember to send it out. You know what? I should probably do it tomorrow or Wednesday before Gen Con. So I can let people know which booth I'm at at Gen Con. And that, yeah, and that next week, the quilt along is on Tuesday instead of Monday. Just in case people are not paying attention. That's probably important to do. Now I just gotta remember to do it. So any questions on this block? I know, right? Right, Nikki? Any questions on this block, on quilting, on any of the, the tools I'm using? that's in my machine see how much faster that one went than the first time I did it so we've got our scrap fabric and pop our scrap fabric in and free row number one exactly exactly Nikki she does she was like I'm like oh I need to remember this Nikki sends me little notes like hey don't forget this which I appreciate I appreciate it Nikki you're gonna be there on Friday for our meetup right I don't remember. Okay. Let's iron these rows. All right. So remember, piece by itself, I'm leaving there. I'm only picking these up and ironing and combining. Fantastic. Now, you know, you're going to have to come up to me and go, hi, I'm Nikki, because I'm, you know, I'm totally not going to remember what you look like. But then once I, I meet you this time, I'm gonna remember what you look like forever. All right, oh, let me put the mat one on because this is row number nine and row number nine goes to the right. Now, row number nine has got three pieces, okay? Now, because we have three pieces, we want to use our center piece, and this is one of the reasons why you want to include that front and that back and the front and the back, so that our center piece is the longest piece if possible. So if you have three pieces, so yes, yes, you can do that. You can do that too. So left piece, we're gonna take this left piece, flip it over the center piece and pin it. It does not make a difference if you have three pieces, which way your seams point or which way your iron, do you just have to make sure that you're pointing it the right direction so that your pieces are correct. And then you wanna take this right piece and flip it over the center and pin it into place. So we're making two, we're sewing it, we're making two different seams in one pass. All right, and then set that aside. Next. And yes, I can tell, like I said, there are people that I hug on a regular basis. I have no clue who they are. So if you just want to give me a hug. Now, I may surprise myself. I may recognize you from my class. Because the reason why I know Nikki is she took one of my classes at Gen Con last year. Now remember, I teach five classes of anywhere between six and 15 people. So I know she's one of those people. Okay, so this is to the left. Okay, and it's important at this step that we make sure that our seams are pointed in the correct direction. That way we know that this is laid out correctly. So let me make sure that this is correct. It is, look, I did it right. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, I may, I may. Were you wearing a cosplay in my class? See, and that's the thing, right? And so I, she, she joined me. So whenever I teach classes live, whether I am at your local quilt guild, at a quilt store, or at a convention, I, I talk about Twitch. And I talk about how 
I live stream whenever I'm doing these things. And you can join me live and ask questions and interact with me. It's one of the reasons the first couple of weeks I did not have the chat block up, the chat stuff up there. Because that's not what I normally do on my Twitch stream. But then I realized on YouTube, people weren't, they were like, wait, she's talking all the time. And she's talking to people and she's doing things, but I can't see what they're saying. So I got to thinking, I'm like, oh, hey. I need to include that so people can see what I'm, who I'm talking to. All right, so it's row number seven to the right. Let's make sure that is correct. Yes. Same exact thing. And then there. All right, now in this case, this piece is longer than that center piece. Don't fret. All you have to do is fold it back because we want to make sure that both of our seams that we're sewing are exposed. So sometimes I have to fold it a few times because no matter how much you try, you're not going to make sure that center piece is the longest piece every single time. There we go. All right, one, two, three, four. This is row number six. This goes to the left. So like, I don't know why you keep thinking that door is gonna be open. All right, that's good. So lay, come on, leave it. Let's go. Come on, go lay down. She keeps going up. So we, I actually have the uh, the cat litter in the laundry room, but I have a gate that that stops it, so the dogs can't go in there and, and enjoy lovely tootsie rolls. So she keeps going over there and sitting in front of the gate, like it's gonna magically disappear. Bless you. There we are. There's that one. We're coming up to my favorite part. My favorite part of pixel quilting. All right, this is row number five. This is to the right. Perfect. And I think every single one of these is actually three. I don't think I have any that have just two or four pieces. I think every single row has three pieces. All right, here's another one where the piece is longer than the center piece. So I'm just gonna fold it back. And it's fine. Now, for those of you, if you are watching on YouTube, you notice how little things will pop up in the chat window of what's now playing. So the music I have playing is by a uh, streaming music service called Pretzel. And what Pretzel does is these are songs that are available for the public for free that you can play on stream sites like Twitch or YouTube or other places. The only thing that they ask is they let you know who the artist is. So you, so this one is actually Lonely Girl by Kill Matthew. And if you go to that link, you can actually see the actual uh, song. So if you like the song, you can pick it up. You can listen to it off stream. All right, so to the left. Oh, here's one where our first one's the same exact length. So what I'm gonna do is fold it back and then. Now, whenever we have these nested seams, I remember I always put a pin in the center in the seam and then put pins on the ends. So 
So if you're watching on YouTube, if there's a song that you like, just take a look at the chat window and head to that website. super quiet again. You realize for the next three streams, I'm going to be teaching in front of people at Tomorrow's Treasures. So we may not have as quiet of streams as we have been for the past couple weeks. If you would like to be part of those streams, if you would like to actually be with me at Tomorrow's Treasures, remember, give them a call, sign up for the class. It is free. And if you ever want to see my schedule, I know, other people. Uh, if you ever want to see my schedule of where I'm appearing and what I'm doing, it is listed on my website. Or if you ever want, just want to pop into my Twitch channel, you can do exclamation conventions. This is row number two. Oh, hey, I lied. This one is only two pieces. And it is to the left, so left over right, and pop it into place. I try to keep that updated as much as I can. Uh, I need to add my Steve Sewin back appearance. They have TwitchCon on there now, right? Yes, okay, good. So uh, probably when I take off Gen Con, I will add in Steve's. I have a few appearances booked in 2019, but I never want to put them in there until it's coming up close for the date, right? All right, and row number one to the right. Oh, this is another two. Man, I really lied, didn't I? All right, so it's to the right, so right over left. So with two pieces, you still follow the rules of the arrows. It's only when you have three pieces that you do not. Okay, so now it's all ironed and pinned. Let's group these up. Because as soon as I do this pass, it's time to start sewing the rows together. So, I'm going to start grouping up all of these rows. And you notice, so these two rows, two rows, two rows, single row. Remember what I said about those lonely little pieces. It's going to apply to the rows as well. So, you'll see after I do it. So, we are making great time. I I think, I think we may be done around 4.15. So I think we're gonna be early. I think it's gonna be good. Which is great. It is wonderful. Oh, I almost forgot. The next two weeks. So next week is uh, Plumber Hero. And the week after is The Adventurer. So, who do you think Plumber Hero is based off of? Now, whenever you're sewing a set of three, I just did it and I didn't explain it. You always want to sew one side. So the other one for the one side. And then trim it, turn it around. And sew the other side. Yes, Maz. I already talked about it earlier. I've talked about it a couple of times. Do as I say, not as I do. Do not sew over your pins. It is a horrible, horrible habit that I have learned that I do. You do not want to sew over your pins because you can damage the timing on your sewing machine as well as break your needle if you hit the pin. Is that better? Do not sew over your sewing, uh, do not sew over your pin. Yes, if you use the clips, you definitely don't want to sew over the clips. You want to remove the clips as you're going. And that's a thing too, you don't have to use pins whenever you quilt. Clips are perfectly fine. There we 
are. Yes, exactly. Now there is a clip. Um, I don't remember the brand name that you can sew over and I actually picked them up. They're a little bit expensive and I picked up a whole bunch and I love, I used to love them until they started breaking. I was not very happy about that one. Yes. And I have sewn over quilting pins and those are the bent safety pins. So there's a special kind of safety pin you use whenever you're sandwiching quilts whenever you do free motion quilting. Um, yeah. They, and I've, I've, sewn, I've sewn over them before. Sometimes I've broke my needle, sometimes I haven't. It takes a very special person. It takes a very special person in order to do that. I know, right? All right, so this is the first time I am not going to free this row. Because remember, this is our lonely little row. We are not going to free it. We're gonna leave it there. And you'll see why in a minute. All right, let's do, let's do some ironing and some pinning of our rows. All right, so let's start at the bottom. Now, with the threes, in fact, you know what, let me put it on the iron. With the threes, okay, I have two seams I need to iron. I can't just iron them away, because remember, it's important the direction that my seam points. So, we want to make sure that my seams go down. So, I have a seam here to iron, and I have a seam here to iron. Alright, so my seams point down because as I iron, those seams are now pointing up. Okay, so, oops, that's not pointing down. That is pointing down. And you know what, I have, I'm gonna pour some water from my That way I don't have to leave and go upstairs and get water. Right? There we go, okay. Perfect, perfect, okay. So now seams are pointing down. And then iron. There we go. Oh, remember how I forgot to lock in those seams. Remember how I said locking the seams in prevents it from warping? You see how this one is a little crook? It's a little kind of like, joing. And it's just, it's a little warped how the center is farther up than the ends. Yeah, that's because I, I kind of forgot to lock those seams. But that's okay, it's still gonna look great. It's still gonna look great. Okay, so these are rows number nine and eight. Okay, so I'm gonna move these up. Let's do nine and eight. So nine, our seams go to the right. Eight, our seams go to the left. And we're gonna take a look at both of those rows. We're gonna make sure that that is correct. And it is, it is correct. So now what I wanna do is take this bottom strip. I'm gonna flip it up over this top strip and I'm gonna pin it into place. Now, I talked about at the very beginning of my stream. Oh, you know what? Before I go into that, I gotta finish this. So, what I'm doing, and I actually almost forgot to explain this. I'm finding for where my, um, where my, my nesting needs to happen. So I'm looking for my seams. So in this case, my, my seam points to the right, my seam points to the left. This is a seam interlock. So I need to find that. I'm moving it around to make sure that is perfectly locked up and then putting a pin in there. Put a pin or a clip in it. So in this case, we want to nest those seams. We want to make sure those seams lock and put a pin in it. 
And I think this is one of the reasons that I still sew over my pins even though I know how bad it is. Because if I pin it perfectly when I sew over my pins, I know it's going to be a perfect point. And I have tried to pull my pins or my clips out and it gets janky and it doesn't become a perfect point anymore. So I, I think that is why I still sew over my pins. Okay, so what was I saying about... Oh yes, if you are watching on um, YouTube or if you're new to my stream, you see the, the bar above? Those are the things that trigger giveaways. Now, I want to be efficient with this teaching and I don't want to do the giveaways while we're teaching on Mondays. So I decided we're still gonna trigger those giveaways, but we're not gonna do it on today's stream. So all of the, the giveaways we trigger on today's stream, we're gonna be doing in the evening of August the 8th. All right, so we have a combined row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and set it aside, okay? Next. Next. So I'm still doing this giveaways that I normally do, just not doing them today. And the same thing's gonna happen next Tuesday. So our next stream is going to be next Tuesday from one to 5 p.m. I will be doing the same thing. There we are. And this is rows number six and seven. That's gotta be seven. Yes, okay, to the right. So then this would be six to the left. And then I'm gonna look at the picture. Yep, that looks good. That looks right. Fantastic, okay. So then the bottom's gonna be flipped up over the top. We're going to match up our seams so right there it's a match up it's locked we're gonna put a pin in it and then i'm gonna go back and put pins in the rest that doesn't match up perfect 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 there we are now when i go back there's a seam right here where there's there's a flat place underneath, I'm still going to put a pin in that. Because by putting a pin in this seam here, I'm making sure... <laughs> I started to say it and then you put the question in. So I'm putting a pin in each of those seams to make sure as I sew it, that the machine doesn't catch it and actually flip the machine, flip the seam. Now, if I have, if I have seams that are flipped back and sewn wrong, it's not a big deal. It's not going to affect the final quilt, but it will be harder to free motion quilt that. So if you if you quilt your own quilt or you send it to a long armor, trust me, the least the the less you have that happen, the better it will be and the more you will thank yourself. There we go. All right, so we have the next two sewn together. So now I'm gonna take this and set that aside. Let's go for the next one. I like having my, uh, my scene control on my phone. It's a lot easier and I don't have to run all the way across the room in order to do it on the computer. Now, for those of you who have not yet seen a stream at Tomorrow's Treasures, if you, on, if you have only seen the Quilt Along streams here at my home studio, there's only two scenes that we do at Tomorrow's Treasures. Okay, so this needs to go to the left and this to the right. Unlike the ones here where we have all sorts of scenes and all over the place, I actually only have two scenes that I flip between. All right, I think that looks good. Now, it's hard to tell on this camera. Uh, the gray and the tan kind of blend in together. 
but you see the closer I put it to the camera, the easier it is to distinguish it. So it's actually not that hard to tell the difference in person. It's only when it's far away from the camera, it's kind of hard to read it. That is something that you need to make sure. What? Oh, crap. And that's our combined one, too. Alright, you want to learn how to fix a flip piece? See, and whenever you're, you're sewing your rows together, that's how when you can tell, right? Okay. This piece right here is, is backwards. I, that was the very first thing I did, too. That was the very, very first thing, because that... I'm gonna cheat. I'm not gonna redo this whole piece. I'm just gonna make another one, but I do have to take it out of here. So what I wanna do is seam rip this. So we're gonna remove this piece. Now make sure that you have a good seam ripper. I know, right? Don't forget to add a goof. So, everyone makes mistakes. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. Everybody in this world makes mistakes. Including me. This is my own pattern, and I messed it up. Yes, the left one. Yes, you have to remove the, this whole piece. This is combined together. This whole thing. So I've got to remove this whole thing. Because this piece right down here is flipped. So, we actually have a counter to how many times I have goofed while live streaming. There we are. Alright, so this is folded back, so I'm going to re-iron this. All I'm going to do is iron this out straight. Just like that. Has the chat not been showing up the entire time I'm on the iron? <gasps> and then, now this piece, I'm just going to trash. I'm just going to make a whole new one because that's going to take too long to redo that one too. So then now I'm going to remove the threads. Now, like I was saying, a good seam ripper is a great investment. So this seam ripper... Oh, okay, but it's been quick scenes. Okay. This seam ripper has got an eraser on the top, and the eraser actually helps remove all of those little threads from the seam ripping. All right, so teaching moment. Why is it important to have a, uh, oops, let's go to gray. Yeah, I'm gonna cut one from here. I need a gray solid piece. Why is it important to remove all of those little tiny pieces of, uh, of thread? Why can you not just leave it? Because when I first started quilting and sewing, I would just leave it, I didn't care. So why is it important that you take those out, that you remove them? All right, so gray. Yeah, you know what I did towards the blue? But then I think I did this, which would then do it wrong. The gray's gotta be on top. Not because I said to, there's a reason behind it. There is a reason behind why you have to get rid of all of those little tiny threads. Not just because I say so. All right, let's sew this. 
Now, at this point, you can do one of two things. You can go ahead and put your scrap fabric in in order to um, in order to free this. Thank you for subscribing. Or what I like to do Grab your is go ahead and pre sew some the of these strips. <coughs> I, I hey, Liquid Hot Magma, you. thank you so much. Wow, eight months already. I have my Dr. Mario quilt hanging in my room. Fan Smiley face. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that resub. I super appreciate you. Thank you very much, Liquid Hot Magma. Eight months. Fantastic. And I'm glad you like the quilt that I made you. That makes me happy. All right, so like I said, I use it as a, let me just go ahead and sew some of the things that I need to sew. And I needed to sew this row. So after this is free, I'm just gonna put it right back where it is. All right, so now let's iron this. All right, and let's make sure it fits. Hey, look at that. No, that's not right. That's not right. There we go. Is that better? Does that look better now that my piece isn't flipped anymore? All right, now let's sew this together. All right, so I have these three pieces. Let's sew it this way first. So this is row number six, row number four. Okay, so it's the left, so left over right. So let's sew this one. Now, you could do a three, but there's so many other little pieces in here. So left over right. Okay, let's sew this. Free this. I'm gonna pull the pins out of here. Remember guys, do not sew over your pins. It is not a good idea. All right, and I'm gonna take this and set it right back where I got it from. And I'm gonna grab the next one. All right, let's free it. Take those pins out and iron it. All right, so in this case, remember, I've already did the left, the left over right to make sure I'm done, I've done it, but I wanna double check to make sure that I'm ironing this correctly. Um, and so the seams need to point down to make sure I've done that. Uh, I'm doing fantastic li liquid hot magma. magma. Uh, we are doing a professional quilt along right now. I actually have people around the world taking quilt classes that I'm teaching them this blog. This was also going to be going up onto YouTube where people can then make this block. So I'm only taking questions about quilting and about this block. So make sure you catch another stream that's not on a Monday if you want to ask me questions about other conventions. Okay, so this is to the left. Yes. I don't know why I can't, I'm looking at this going, why is this not to the left? Look, my seams are to the right. It would help if I switch the camera angle. My seams are to the right, and I'm like, why is this not look right? Because it's to the left. It needs to go to the left. Just like that. Just like that. So, left over right, and let's pin that into place. I know, I know. I think I'm getting tired, which is not bode well, because I still have a lot to get done today after stream. So left over right, we're gonna pin this into place. Fantastic, and we're gonna sew this. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because remember I had to fix this block because I made a mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and take these and iron them and combine them. So I'm gonna take this and just set it down right here knowing I need to sew this, but I need something to free it. So I can either use my scrap fabric or I can just go ahead and do this one and then put this to the machine, which is what I think it is. It was an almost, yes. 
Oh, oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for your vote of confidence. I, uh, I, I appreciate all of you and your vote of confidence that, uh, that I, if I didn't realize that, I would have sewn it that way. Yeah. I, I would not have been happy if I would have sewn it that way. At all. There we go. Fantastic. All right, so this is rows number one and two. So this need, no it's not. This is rows two and three. To the left. That's to the left. That's to the right. No, I, you, I'm not gonna sew it the other way just so you can count another goof. There we are, that looks right. That looks right. All right, so bottom to the top. And pin it into place. Perfect. And then finding where those seams line up and pinning it. The next one's right here, but then I'm gonna go back and put a pin into this one. Okay, the next one's here, so put a pin in there, and then go back and find my other free seams that don't have one in there. You guys are funny. Are you are you trying to just make me mess up again? Or are you trying to make me stream longer? Thank you very much, Solette. I super appreciate it. But no, it's, it, I am dead serious. As we are people, and as people, we are not perfect. I don't care who you are or what you do, everyone makes mistakes with everything. It's, we are not perfect. And even I make mistakes in my own quilting. I mean, look at my goofs. Look at my goofs. I show you my the Bob Ross one where I flipped him all the way upside down. All right. I'm going to leave that there so I can sew it to free our fixed piece. Oh. Same thing? Yes, yes. There we are. Let's free you. And take the pins out. Pins out. Pins out. Taking the pins out, you don't see me sew over my pins. And let's put that back where I got it from. And we need to free this now, so let's play this one. So sometimes the reason why people like me to stream longer, A, more chances of giveaways, but of course our giveaways aren't till next Thursday, but I also have a reward system. If you are watching me on YouTube and you have not yet caught me live on Twitch, I actually have a, um, a reward system here on Twitch where if you hang out and watch me live, you get what's called quilt coins. As long as you're hanging out here and watching, you're earning coins. And you can turn those quilt coins in for free patterns. You can turn them in for, uh, for a free quilt that's hanging on the wall behind me or you can convert them to my other system called Pixels. And with Pixels, you actually get to pick any quilt you want for me. So it's a certain pixel thing that I get to actually uh, do for free. Uh, thank you very much, Buck. Unfortunately, we do not have the sound on uh, because today is our, is our official quilt along. And with the quilt along, I am teaching live to stores around the world, so I can't take breaks in order to give treats to the animals. I apologize, but I will give them those treats after the stream. So thank you very much for those bits, Spock. Okay, so we've got this one and this one. Does this look right now? I think I, I, think I fixed it. I think I've got it. <laughs> oh, ministry. All right, so. We're gonna take this bottom one, flip it up, and we're gonna pin it into place. So, finding where our seams combine. Thank you again, Spock, I appreciate that. Hello, kittens, how are you today? All right, so we're finding where our seams join, and we are pinning it.
There we are. We're pinning all these together. There we are. Now that's the next time that they join up. So I'm pinning that and then I'm going back and then pinning where those seams are by themselves. There we go. Perfect. All right. The next time it lines up is this down here. So let's put a pin in that and then go back and fill it in. Fantastic. All right. Wonderful. Now let's pin that. Let's sew this. Let's sew our fixed piece. Whoops. Wrong one. Sorry. I hit, I hit the wrong camera. All right. Now I need to remember that these are not in order anymore because I was fixing the piece I did wrong. So these are no longer in the correct order. So this one is actually rows two and three combined together. And this one I'm sewing right now is four and five. Okay. So let's take these pins out. And we're gonna move this back to where it belongs, which is right here. Because remember, we have a hole right here for this one. All right, so I'm back on track again. All right, now remember what I said about combining the rows. We always, 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 if we have a lonely little piece that has been left out, we want to make sure that we include it in. So this is our lonely little piece that we left out for our rows. So we want to make sure we include it with this one. The one that's in my machine is going to be included with this one. So now this is our lonely little piece. Does that make sense? So now we want to combine these together and sew it. So. Got a small problem. I have a cat on my ironing board. Hi. Uh, really? You don't say. So I've already done the sewing. So now I just want to iron it. And lay it out. Luckily, these are short little strips and she's not anywhere near it. She just kind of moved to the other side of the ironing board. Oops. Let me lock this. And iron it open. Now, whenever you are ironing your combined rows, it does not make a difference which way your seams are pointing. You can iron up, you can iron down, you can even iron your seams open. It does not make a difference at all. All right, so here is our lovely rows. You know what, Maz? That would be an option. It's an option to have a cat on your ironing board. It it, it, it adds excitement to your uh, quilt block making. But if you don't want that extra excitement, it's okay to forego the cat. That's a great question. All right. So we're going to take this. We're going to pop it down because remember, I like to have the uh, path of least resistance. And the same thing that we've been doing with combining those bo those blocks, to those uh, rows together. All right, so let's combine those, put a pin in there, go back, pin the rest. Where's the next time this combined? Right here. Put a pin in this first, and then we're gonna go back and pin the rest. There we go. And then here's our next one to combine. Hey guys, guys, we're almost done. We're not gonna hit the 415 I thought we were gonna hit for finishing the block because of course I flipped a piece and I messed up. But we're still gonna make some great time and we will finish well before five o'clock. All right, so that is our combined piece. So let's go ahead. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one because I need to free this one. So let's sew this. And let's free this one. Because that one is going to be combined with the other one. All 
Alright, taking the pins out, remember. Don't do this, your pins should already be out. You can't see me. You can't see that I'm taking my pins out. And I sewed over my pins. Okay. Iron? Remember, ironing the, the rose. It does not make a difference which way you iron the rose. <coughs> you can iron it up. You can iron it down. You can iron your seams open. It is completely up to you. There we go. Oh, I have to iron this one still. All right, so there's that one. I find if I'm locking my seams, it's easier if my seams point to the left for locking it. So I'm not like, ironing any seams open and weird as I'm doing it. <gasps> no, Soleil. Come on, come lay down. All right, we gotta make sure I do it correctly. That's not right. much better it looks much better I know I almost I know I almost did it I almost so did it I'm wrong and then I realized it doesn't quite look right so I had to do it all right so we're gonna take this one flip it over and pin it and then we have this strip over here this lonely little strip all by itself with nothing to combine so at this point once I have this set sewn this no baby i can't pick you up and love you yet i will love you when i'm done when i'm squaring the block up you can sit in the chair all right go lay down go lay down marley go lay down baby all right so when now after i sew this strip i will have three strips so what happens when we get down to just three strips Anyone remember from previous blocks? All right, you gotta move, baby. You can't be on my pedal. You gotta move. Do the bop it thing? What is the bop it thing? Hello, Hestia. Oops, wait, sorry. What is the, what is the bop it thing? Or are you just being silly? Oh, so it turn it bop, okay, I get it. Uh, yes, when you get down to three strips, you wanna sew them all together. Which means I need to free this strip that's in there. Because I have two up there. So let me grab my scrap fabric. And that also means we are almost done. We are doing our final sewing of the strips together. Yes, Nikki. Me too. A and kittens as well. Okay. Let's do, let's iron all three of these strips. Let's lock our seam. And iron it out. All right, let's lay that out. Grab the next one. You like how she abandoned me? There we are, we've got that one ironed. And last but 
and not least, our lonely little piece. And this is why you want to sew it with a scant quarter inch. Because as you're ironing this, you have to remember to keep that seam in mind. Because that seam being folded over takes away from some of your measurements. So by sewing a scant quarter inch, you now have taken away a perfect quarter inch from each of these blocks. There we go. And then we are down to three pieces. There we go. I think he looks good. He's starting to take shape. All right, so now, we will do the bop it thing. I guess this is this is what it's now called, is the bop it. So we are flipping it, pinning it. I like I like how Nikki has uh, has coined termino quilting terminology. It, it's the same thing as a flippy flappy. A flippy flappy is a technical term when it comes to binding. It's the corner piece that goes flippy flappy. That's how you know you've done it right. It's if you've got a flippy flappy piece. All right, let's do this. That's our next combination. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna sew these in place. There we go. Oh, and there's no seam, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just sew these in place. It sounds just like the bop it, flip it, pin it, sew it, turn it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna flip it, we're gonna turn it, and then we're gonna pin it. It's the bop it. Do they still sell bop it? Shot you a message, Nikki. There we go. And then pinning. This is our last set of pinning. Guys, 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 this is the last row we need to pin. This is it. This is it. Alright, so here's combo. There's the next combo where you have the two seams pointing each other. Thank you, ma'am. And I have no more combos, so let's just sew that. Let's just pin it here. And that's it. That is our last pin for Mega Android. All right. Whew. And let's sew it. So just like with the threes of the rows, we are gonna sew one side, free my scrap. After we sew the one side, Use our scrap. Oops. Free it and take this whole thing and flip it around and sew the other side. take our pins out remember you don't see this i don't sew over my pins it's a bad habit thank you so much for bringing your friends by green jam i super appreciate that uh for those of you just popping in if you haven't seen me before i'm tony 
I am a professional pixel quilter. So I have my own line of patterns in quilt stores around the world based upon video game and comic book pop culture characters. Right now we are in block number seven of our quilt along. So with our quilt along, we actually have classes of people around the world right now that are watching this stream either live or they're going to be watching it on YouTube and doing this block along with us. So if you want information on the quilt along, please exclamation quilt along. And we are actually almost finished. I actually just did the final sewing together of our mega Android block, which again is block number seven. Uh, for those of you that are here on Twitch, please make sure you give Green Jam a follow. We always want to make sure that we support people that support us. And as soon as my stream is done, I will go through and make sure that I follow them as well. Because that's what we do. Alright, so this is our final ironing. Now for those of you that just joined, if you are interested in making this block, I have it for sale on my website. And you can go always go back and rewatch this VOD here on Twitch or on YouTube tomorrow. There we go. And da 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 we have a finished block. There we are. There is thank you very much for that shout out, Nikki. I appreciate you. Here is our finished block. Doesn't he, and he looks like the bottom left corner, which is perfect. It wouldn't have looked like that if I did not catch that flipped piece, so thank you very much for pointing that out, everyone. All right, now let's square our block. So let's pull out our, where is it? Oh, where is my ruler, my long ruler? Did I put it someplace? Oh, no, it, no, it's not. Hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think. All right, let me start pulling out all my rulers. I can't find my, oh, there it is. It was hiding. It was hiding. My long ruler was hiding. I can't have long rulers hide. That's not good. Okay. So I'm gonna move this back over here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna take a look to see how wide and long my ruler, my, my block is. Because remember, with quilting, it's super important that you square your blocks. Please square your blocks. So in this case, it is about 18 and a half inches wide by about, uh oh. Oh, when I was sewing my rows together, I did not do a skint quarter inch at all. I probably did a real quarter inch because look, it is just barely 18 inches long. Thank you for subscribing. And that's to why we want to make sure that Grab we square this up. Head down Gear to the drops. Sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean. Factory. Gear drops, thank you so much for that stuff. Chewy high quilt on a quilt, chewy high quilt on a quilt, chewy high. Hi, hi, gear drops. Thank you so much for 11 month, 11 month resub. I super appreciate you. I will talk about where I'm going to see you and everything else in our next regular stream next Thursday. So, if you want to if you want to hear all about uh, gear drops and, and my adventure that's going to happen next week, make sure you're here next Thursday when we're not doing our uh, our official quilt along streams. It's going to be fun. Okay, so, this is a little bit over 18 inches. Umbridge, thank you so much for the host. Thank you so much for the host. All right, and then this one, remember I said, is 18 and a half. So we need to square this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use one of my seams that is pretty straight as a square up, and I'm going to line it up along there. So now that is, is straight, okay? So he's pretty, pretty much straight. And I'm going to put it in between my point here and the 18. Now, if you have an 18 inch square up ruler, this is going to be a lot easier for you to do. Unfortunately, I do not. I do not know if they even make an 18 inch square up ruler. So I use my large cutting mat to square up my blocks. And then I'm going to draw a line right there. And then we are going, there we go. Now, same thing. I'm going to flip it. It's like a bop it, right? I'm going to flip it. 
Oh, they do mass? They have a 24. Oh, that's my next purchase. Oh my gosh, I want an 18 inch square up ruler. If you have one, it's, oh man. Cause this is supposed to be 18 inches, right? Now, what I'm gonna be doing in this case is all I'm doing is lining it completely up along the left. So I'm going to line up my seam that I lined up the last time. And then I'm going to line up my line here on the left. So that looks perfectly lined up to me. So then now, let's line this up here on the 18. So if you don't have a square up ruler, this is how you square your blocks. Oops, oops, I slipped because this is not a very expensive ruler. My nice one, I left in Maryland by accident. There we go. That is now squared up. Thank you very much, Umbridge. I appreciate that. All right, so we have our strips onto the left and to the right. Now we're gonna turn this and we're gonna square it up again. Same exact thing. Now, except my bottom and my top are now my lines. So I wanna line this up along the bottom and top and I wanna have it halfway between my zero and my 18. There we go. All right, I think I've got it. So let's trim this up. Now, don't forget, if you are doing the quilt along with us, our next live stream is not going to be a Monday. So our quilt alongs are normally every single Monday. Oops, I didn't do it hard enough. I just gotta go back and redo my rotary cutting. Uh, our next quilt along is not going to be next Monday. It is going to be next Tuesday because I am going to be at Gen Con next week on Monday. I'll be driving back from Gen Con. So our next one will be on Tuesday from one to five o'clock and we will be doing the Hero Plumber, which is inspired, of course, by Mario. Now, next week and the week after, the week after is Adventurer. Thank you very much, Gear Drops. The weekend, the week after that is the Adventurer, which is inspired by Link. So those two are the hardest blocks in the entire quilt along. Now remember, next week and for the next two weeks after that, I'll be streaming live from Maryland from the Tomorrow's Treasures Quilt Shop. If you are in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area and you're doing the quilt along, if you would like to join us live and be here on the Twitch stream, make sure you call Tomorrow's Treasures and you sign up. All right, we're done. It's squared up. We now have a block that is perfectly 18 by 18 inches. Perfectly 18 by 18 inches. Uh, no to the second one, I'll tell you later. Although that first one, is she PG? Thank you guys, thank you. All right, that's it. That's it. I think so. I think so, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, th yeah, that's amazing. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, so uh, that is it for the stream. If you are joining us live, then we are going to go find someone to raid. I believe. Okay. Uh, I believe we are going to um, we're going to go raid someone now. Disclaimer, if I am live, now because we are live in quilt stores right now around the world, I always try to find someone to raid that's a PG streamer. This person we're gonna raid today is an amazing, awesome, fantastic friend of mine. And I don't remember if she's PG or not. If she's not PG, she's PG 13. So if I'm live at a public place, um, it is going it is amazing, amazing streamer by the name of Alexandra Lee Studios, um, who is a friend of mine, amazing, awesome co photographer, cosplay photographer. She's just amazing. Um, if you don't want to take the chance if I'm live in a public place, please change the channel at this point. Um, if you're watching me on YouTube, go ahead and go on to the next video. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I will be back next Tuesday because I'm off to Gen Con.